All right, guys, today I wanted to share with you how I edit an HDR photo. We're not gonna be using any flash. This is just gonna be five frames, two stops apart, or an interior that I shot recently. And I'm gonna walk you through how I do it in case maybe you're struggling, maybe you're curious, or you just want to learn more about another way to edit HDR photos. So we've got our five brackets here. Um, each of them, like I said, two stops apart. What I have applied to them is my pre-infusion uh, preset here. And all that's gonna do is give us some basic adjustments or an automatic white balance, a uh, little bit of highlight pull, shadow boost, some white and blacks, and a little bit of texture and clarity. There's gonna be some lens corrections and a small amount of sharpening applied to it as well. Uh, but outside that, that's all I'm gonna do. I call this a pre-infusion preset because we are going to be using a, a plugin called Lightroom Infuse. All of these are stacked. I am currently in my, uh, what do you call this thing? The quick view or the quick collection. So all this is going to be in there. That's why you don't see the stack, but understand that it is stacked. And you will need it stacked before you use this. So we're gonna to go to File, go to our Plugins and Extras, Blend using Lightroom Infuse. If anybody's curious on how to get this installed or how to set it up, I can do another video on that. Uh, as we go through the tabs, everything in the first one is going to be standard. The second one, I do not have things automatically aligning. This takes a very long time. I would suggest not using auto alignment. And as far as the infuse goes, here are my settings. I have an exposure weight of one, a saturation weight of 0.55, and a contrast weight of 0.1. This just means that my exposure is gonna be the top priority, then saturation, and finally contrast on the lowest priority. We're gonna to go to our output. I have batch mode selected. That means if I have a bunch of photos from a shoot and they're all stacked and organized together inside of photo, or Lightroom, they are going to just be all one after another infused. Uh, the output files, um, I create a blended images in the same folder. That way it keeps organization easy. I append the file name with dash HDR so I know that they have been blended. TIFF format uh, and LZW compression. Since these are going to be for real estate and going on to the MLS, it does not really matter at the end of the day. 16-bit uh, bit depth and an Adobe RGB. I do have the re-import into Lightroom and I do copy all that metadata because it is a lot easier for me to delineate them and sort them if I need to later because they will have all of that data. This is where we would click infuse images, but I have already done that so we don't have to sit and wait for it. It largely does not take a tremendous amount of time, but plan for for a two to 2,500 square, 2,000 to 2,500 square foot home to take mm, on and maybe on average like 15 minutes. It depends on your computer, but for me it takes about 15 minutes to infuse all of them. This is the result of that infusion. It is a very flat image, but the color is very nice. Now for some people, this might be enough for you. If you are doing a quick like turn um, and you need stuff that's really usable really quickly now, you could do this and probably go over here to your tone curve and just add like a medium contrast to it. And that's probably going to be good enough for a very quick turn. It's very nice, it's clear, it's easy to see, the color is great. It does not have a tremendous amount of color casting it is a very pleasant image. But we are going to take that a step further and we are going to blend in a little bit more shadow and a little bit more highlight to kind of just bring that window down a little bit, bring a little more detail into some areas and go from there. So I'm going to choose, this is my base image. We're going to then choose one for our highlights and one for our shadows. So for the highlights, we want a dark image. So let's go take a look at this guy right here. I don't know if this is what we want to use. I think I've actually already got this one set up for it. So we're going to use this one. Yes, if you see here, this is what we're looking for outside. This is where all of our highlight data is and this is what we want to showcase. Now, not necessarily all the junk in this guy's yard. However, we want to show this very, very nice blend outside. Don't really need to worry too much about the interior as we are not going to be pulling a lot of that in, maybe a little bit here, but a lot of these lights are already pulled in and the highlights are pretty good. So we're gonna leave it maybe just a little more detail here. Now we want something to boost up our shadows. So let's go check this guy out. Nice and bright. I think this is probably gonna be good enough for us. We've got a lot of detail here. It's not too crazy bright like this guy's probably gonna be, but we want to take that one. So we're gonna do this guy, this guy, and that guy. That's gonna be three frames. One for our base exposure, which is the one, excuse me, that guy, that we blended in Lightroom and Fuse. We're gonna do one for the highlights to where we can pull everything back down that we need to, mostly the window. And we're gonna have one for the shadows where we can kind of lift them just a little bit and add some more detail where we need to. We will right click those, edit in, open as smart object layers in Photoshop. Give it a second, 
It's gonna take a minute for it to move over there, but as soon as it does, it will pull up. There we go. I'm gonna let those come in and I will show you how we're gonna do it. We are going to be using Raya Pro, which is a luminosity blending application. If you don't have uh, Raya Pro, that is okay. I would highly suggest that you still follow along um, and maybe invest in Raya Pro or Lumenzia, which is the other one. I like Raya Pro, it's what I learned on. Lumenzia is a little more complicated for me, but a lot of people swear by it, and I would highly recommend you check either them out because if you're gonna do a lot of this, they're a great investment tool, and they're great for architecture as well because they make blending simple. Okay, so first we're gonna go through and label all these guys. This one's gonna be called our base. This is our dark exposure, so I'm gonna label it for our highs or our highlights, excuse me. And this is just how I name things because it works with my brain. You are more than welcome to label it whatever you want. Bring our base down to the bottom. We are going to be dealing, this one I'm gonna deal with my shadows first. So we're just gonna turn these layers off, click on our base, go into instant mask. And here we have brights, darks, midtones. As in my uh, Twilight video, we are going to be clicking on the number twos because I find them to work best for my photos and my exposure. So we are going to be working on the shadows. So let's go ahead and click the darks too. That way it selects all of our shadows. We're going to minimize that, grab this and drag it on top of our lows. So that way it boosts it, we'll turn it back on and you see it gets kind of flat and that's fine. We're going to hold shift, click the folder to put it into a group. We're gonna let go of shift, hold alt and click the mask and that's gonna mask it off. Go to our brush, I'm at a 20% opacity and a 15% flow. You can adjust those to whatever you like. This gives me a very delicate balance so that I can kind of brush them in and build it up. Kind of a building up effect, if you will. So we're just gonna kind of paint some of these darker areas in just where we wanna see a little bit more detail. This back here needs some of it. Some of these cabinets. That maybe just give us a little bit of lift here. A little bit of lift here. Again, on this fridge, not really too concerned about that. A little bit there. So now let's click on it and you can see gives us just a nice little bit of lift. It's very subtle, but that's kind of what we're going for. And we are now going to go work on our lows and the window pole. So I'm gonna duplicate this guy just so we have it for the window pole. And then we're gonna go back in here, hit instant mask, and we are going to click on brights too. That's going to select all of our brights. That's pretty good. It looks a little bit dark to me, so I might actually come in here and adjust my mask a little bit. Um, let's push it this way just a little bit. Get those midtones to come in a little bit. This is just refining the mask as I go. Now that looks pretty good. We're gonna grab this guy, drop him on our highs, turn it on. You can see it looks pretty ugly and flat, but again, we're gonna fix it. Hold shift, click our folder to group it. Hold alt, click mask to put a mask over it. And again, we're just gonna paint in. So this is a little bright for me. I'd kind of like to bring some more detail into this guy. Now you will notice this image is very noisy, so I'm not gonna go crazy in here. Maybe just bring a little of that down. Bring a little of that down, something like that. I think that's pretty good. You'll just see pretty subtle, but it does kind of pull down any of that. If you have any highlights that you're like, ah, this is just a little bit too much. Maybe this guy over here, we can kind of pull those down a little bit as well. See, they just kind of make it a little more subtle. Now we're gonna work on this window pole here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, we want just all this, so I'm just gonna leave it off and I'm gonna use my pen tool. And the pen tool is, there's a couple ways to do this and there's probably a lot faster ways, but this is the most precise way of doing it, which is why I like doing it this way. So we're just gonna go ahead and outline all this stuff and grab it. The pen tool is pretty quick, especially if you like to, uh, if you get used to using it. And again, I like it because it's very flexible and it's easy to do. You could probably do some different luminance selections. You could do a lot more mask refining and I'm sure you could get there, but it's a little bit too fiddly for me. And this is just the way that I can guarantee I get the result that I want. I know from experience that this mask is probably not going to be perfect, um, but that is why it's not perfect, but it just has to look like it. That's kind of a rule I've always said. And that's why when you'll see when I make these selections, under my selection here, I have this feather radius by 2%. 
That means that everywhere I'm gonna have, everywhere I have my mask going, the border of it is gonna have a two pixel feather. And that just kind of blurs the line and makes the transition a lot smoother. You'll also notice when I'm doing this, I'm not selecting everything. I'm not selecting like parts of the window on the inside because they are going to be a little bit too dark. So when I do this, I wanna make sure I am roughly outlining it. Watch this chromatic aberration here. This probably comes from a slight amount of camera shake sensor wiggle because I had uh, Oh, the in-body stabilization on and it may have moved a little bit but for our purposes it does not matter but yes i'm not selecting a lot of the window like bars and stuff on the inside of the windows and that's important because when you select that stuff you can get dark lines you don't want dark lines because dark lines really stand out and draw the eye and it's kind of a very amateur way of doing it and again, I know that this is very fiddly, but if you're doing it yourself, this is where you kind of get that appreciation for when you do use an editor, because this is tough. And when you get, you pay somebody a very small amount and they don't give you the results you want, you gotta remember this is, this takes a lot of time and it's kind of hard. Not every photo is gonna need this, but again, this is what I do as a perfectionist. I think this is probably good enough for most people and a lot of realtors are not gonna really care or notice this. But for me, I like it to look natural. I like it to look impactful. I like to have a very, very nice look to this. So we're gonna turn this guy on and we are just gonna click our mask. And there it is. That looks pretty good. But for me, it's a little bit dark. We do have that line, that purple line here, which is a little bit frustrating, but we're gonna deal with that really quickly here. So let's go into this guy. This is a smart object, so we can just double click it and it's gonna go ahead. Oh, what? So this is a fun thing. So I just duplicated this smart layer and this is something important to note. If I command Jade this smart layer, if I go in and edit it, it's going to affect the one that I, both of them, because they are technically the same thing. It's just a copy of it. So if you really want to do this, what we need to do is click on this guy and we are going to do, uh, it's new object via copy. New smart object via copy right there. Take this, I'm gonna delete that layer mask. I'm gonna put this guy on here, drag him up, get rid of our old one and there. I know that that doesn't looks like it did anything, but trust me, if you were to go in here and edit it, all of those masks that we had done in our previous layer would have changed as well because I'm going to darken or lighten this slightly. So let's pop in here to this guy and we just want to brighten this up. So I'm going to push the blacks up a bit because I want it to really blend in. And then I'm just going to push this up and pull our hots a little more just to kind of stretch that as much as we can. Hit OK, and there we go. I think that looks a lot more natural and it looks a lot better. This black line is really not pulling attention anymore, and that looks really, really good. Now we're gonna try and replace the sky on this one. Your, your mileage may vary on this. I have not been uh, very successful sometimes in doing this because a lot of times it will select the entire image, but it should only select the area that is masked, and it did. Uh, it works pretty well. A lot of times what I'm aiming for in this is not to make a forced perspective of a crazy blue sky, perfectly clear, perfectly blue. I want something that feels natural. So this guy works for me. It was a partly cloudy day. We don't need to go in and adjust anything. I am gonna mess with the brightness a little bit just so we can kind of see. I think it does need to be a little bit brighter. Does that make sense? We're gonna tint it blue as well because it's a little cool and it's still winter here. It isn't spring yet. And we are going to come in here and we change our foreground lighting. One thing I do like in foreground lighting is to turn it mostly off. I have found it to be a far better result when I do that. The edge lighting, this tends to give us a little bit more contrast as we're coming in. So you can you can play with these sliders and see what you like. I think it's something right about in there. There shouldn't be too much of a color adjustment on this one, but you can play with this. If you're noticing your image is a little bit weird colored, this color adjustment can kind of be the culprit of it. Go ahead, click okay. And we've got our sky replacement. And I think this looks great. We need to take a little bit more refinement into it. I'm gonna pull it into what I use, which is Nick FX Color FX 6. So we are going to flatten this layer. I have it bound to F4. You can head up to your layer menu, go to the bottom and there'll be a flattened image. I just press F4 because it makes it easier. And the reason that we flatten it is because otherwise it's going to only affect certain layers and we want it to infect the entire image. Now you can do that with 
making it into its own, again, new smart object, which is kind of just a container for everything. Uh, it gets a little big and file sizes get large, so I don't like to do that. All I'm gonna do on this one is come down to what is called Pro Contrast. We're going to add that. The color cast is gonna make it look real goofy, so we're not gonna deal with the color casting. It works a lot better for landscapes, not so much for interiors. I'm gonna move this correct contrast to kind of bring in a little more contrast. 22 looks good. And add some dynamic contrast to lift those shadows just a little bit more. 28, and we're gonna hit okay. It's gonna apply it to that layer. We will flatten it one more time because it will make a copy of it. Boom, flatten it with my F4, and there we go. That looks really, really good. We have a little bit of a strange line down here, so we'll go into Lightroom and fix that. So we'll go ahead and save it. I do like doing it in Photoshop, but there is a missing constraint to crop button in Camera Raw that I like out of Lightroom. So we're just gonna go into Lightroom and do it. As we come in here, this is our final image. It pulled us in. We're gonna go to that Transform. It constrained a crop, and then we are just going to adjust these. Now you could do a guided on all this stuff, but I think that's gonna kind of force and skew some things. So what I'm gonna do is just take this horizontal, that is that what we wanna do? Yeah, that's what we want. Pull it over just a little bit. Now that's a little much. Let's do like eight. Eight feels a little off, maybe six. There we go, six looks pretty good. And then we gotta rotate it just a little bit to make sure that it lights up. Something like this. Looks pretty good to me. Yeah, and there we go. We have our better perspective. We're straight on to it. The lines are all matching up. Everything looks really good. We've got a really nice window pole here. Everything blends and feels really, really nice. So if you're doing things yourself, this is one way that you can quickly blend something. And when you're doing it, you're not teaching it, you're not talking, and you're just kind of going through it. It can usually take you anywhere from, if a complicated window gets in your way, maybe five to six minutes. Uh, if there is no window, you'll be doing this within two minutes per photo. And it's a great way to get experience doing it and to create your own style and what you like. Um, that way that if you do use an editor and when you do get to a point where you have to have an editor, you can then send them your style photos and say, hey, here's what I'm looking for. And you can also understand why people price the things that they do. Because I think a lot of times when new people come into real estate photography or people get into it for the wrong reasons, they are looking for the cheapest solution possible because they don't care about the effort because they don't understand what it takes to get into that effort and what, what effort, it, what it took to produce that. So for me, it's more about being like, okay, I understand why people are charging what they are and I can have a better understanding of what that price point is and what I should be getting for that price point so you can negotiate with them and get a better deal and get better quality photos because that's what this is all. If you guys have any questions, let me know. I'm gonna keep doing more of these just to kind of give you different options, different situations, tough situations, easy situations because I think a lot of people like to come in with very easy scenarios and show you how to do this. We'll be doing flambient blending as well because I do do a lot of that. This particular client was an HDR client, so that's why this is this way. I hope you enjoyed it. Leave me some comments down below, leave me some feedback, and uh, we'll go from there. Thanks for checking it out, guys. I appreciate it.